Uh, hi, my name is Ilya Lesikov. I'm a software developer at Flant, and today I'm going to be talking about our deployment subsystem in Verve, um, which is based on uh, Helm 3, how, how it differs from Helm 3, um, where it all started, and uh, what is the future of our uh, deployment system. So, I'm one of the Worth developers. Uh, previously, I worked as a DevOps engineer specialized in automation and delivery to Kubernetes. Uh, and let's start with a few words about Worth, what it is. Uh, Worth is a tool to build your CI CD pipelines from building images to deploying your Helm charts to Kubernetes. Uh, Worth is a CNCF sandbox project. Uh, we have 10,000 active projects uh, that are running on Worth. Uh, which means uh, building images and deploying to Kubernetes. <clears throat> uh, we have 3,800 uh, GitHub stars and eight years of pretty active development for Worf. Uh, to deploy something with Worf, all you need is a Git repository which contains a Helm chart, a Worf YAML file, and optionally a Docker file. Optionally means you do not uh, need to build images with uh, worth, uh, but you can if you want to. Uh, having all that, you execute worth converge, which will build the images, uh, will publish the images to the container registry, and then it will deploy your Helm chart. But worth is not just a wrapper around uh, Docker and Helm. Uh, to build, we use our own builder, which is based on Builda from Red Hat. In comparison to the vanilla Docker builder, it has uh, such features as a distributed cache out of the box, uh, automatic content-based tagging, smart cleanup of container registry, and a handful of other features. Uh, same with deploy. We do not use just like plain vanilla Helm, but we use uh, our heavily improved version of Helm 3. What it means, how much it is improved and in what ways will become more clear um, later in the presentation. So, uh, Helm in Worf. We use uh, Helm as a uh, deployment subsystem in Worf to deploy your Helm charts. It all started as a, uh, I'd say, light Helm fork. It did not have many changes. Uh, it was mostly like small fixes or mm, features that we did not manage to land uh, into upstream Helm 3 in time, but we wanted uh, to make it uh, available to our users. Uh, at the same time, we were regularly uh, rebasing our Helm fork upon Helm upstream to get all the new features and fixes, but with time we noticed that the Helm 3 development slowed down a lot. Uh, for example, Helm 4, which is expected to be released, which was expected to be released in 2024-2023, at least ac according to the uh, Helm uh, improvement proposals. But n right now it's 2024 and there is still not even a roadmap for Helm 4, as, as far as I know. And overall, it looks like uh, Helm 3 more of in a maintenance mode right now. To not be unfounded, here is a diagram with all the commits to the uh, Helm 3, all they have in their repository, all the commits to Helm 3 in the past uh, half a year. So there is basically one feature that can be called uh, mid-sized feature. It is a new command, uh, Helm get metadata, if I remember correctly, which is pretty trivial uh, in implementation and not very useful overall. <clears throat> Other than that, there is six like minor features, like a uh, flag cube version for the Helm template command, and uh, a few, again, pretty simple fixes for not very critical things, and that's all for, for half a year. Uh, all the other commits are just either uh, updates to the test suits or documentation, CI, uh, updates of dependencies, so nothing much. And the, situ the situation like that stays for at least a few years already and we do not see it changing anytime soon. But uh, our users come to us and ask for new features, ask, ask for fixes to the long-standing Helm box. Uh, 
uh, and while previously we were hoping to land our changes into the helm upstream or maybe they will fix or add something by themselves uh, right now it becomes uh, very difficult uh, even to land our changes even not so big changes uh, to the upstream helm 3 uh, takes a lot of time and effort so uh, at the end we decided to start our active development of our uh, helm 3 fork uh, and now it basically comes to uh, what we are going to make uh, a standalone project um, the name is now it will it will do all the same things the helm does without uh, all the extras that Werf provides which is building uh, and a few other things uh, so it will do all the same things the helm does but will hopefully do it better uh, will provide additional features and a lot a lot of bug fixes right now Nelm is available only as part of uh, Werf as its deployment engine so if you want to try now just try Werf uh, version 2 and what is now Nelm is uh, a partial implementation or implementation of Helm uh, Helm basically is um, consists of two uh, main components parts. Uh, the first one is the deployment subsystem, um, and the second one is the chart management and rendering subsystem. Uh, the first part, the deployment subsystem, we uh, basically made from scratch, uh, but in a backwards compatible manner with Helm, so that you can deploy all the same Helm charts without uh, need to change anything in them to re rewrite them uh, for the second part of Helm the chart management subsystem we improved it and we are continuing to improve it in all the ways uh, and I want to and I want to emphasize that Nelm is backwards compatible with Helm and with Werf and how Werf uh, behaved uh, previously so you don't need to uh, change anything in your charts to try out Nelm or Werf. Uh, Werf uses Nelm to deploy as the deployment engine, as I already said, and it is the only one default and the only one deployment engine uh, starting from Werf uh, to a point zero. <clears throat> In the nearest future, we will provide Nelm with its own standalone. Uh, command line interface so you can use it without Werf, without all the bi uh, image building and uh, all the other stuff. Uh, we will also make uh, an embeddable library out of Nelm so it can be easily embedded into third-party software and not only Werf but also uh, Flux and maybe Argo and others. <coughs> uh, so how Nelm and Werf uh, differs from the vanilla Helm 3. Uh, let's start with uh, how we track resources and how we track and determine the uh, final release status. Uh, why even track the status of resources during the deployment? First is to understand if the release is actually succeeded or not. Uh, it is not very helpful when the uh, your CI job is all green and Helm tells you that all is fine and good <clears throat> but then you figure out that some of your deployments uh, failed uh, the containers const constantly restarting or something else <clears throat> so to actually uh, understand if the release is failed or not we need to um, accurately determine the status of resources during the deployment uh, also to run an automatic rollback we need to again um, accurately understand uh, the if the release uh, is failed or not uh, also would have would have been good if we could catch all the errors or at least most of them that could happen during our our deployment for example if there is a part that's failing that's restarting <clears throat> uh, if we could actively catch problems like that and react to them stopping the uh, Helm release early uh, that would again would be beneficial in a way like for example with automatic rollbacks the earlier we 
we can un uh, decide that the release is actually not going to progress. Uh, the less uh, there is a potential of um, your application not working in the production. So, uh, also to maintain a specific order uh, of resource deployments, uh, we need to understand uh, when the uh, one or the other resource is actually uh, up and ready. So, uh, how does the deployment progress in real time looks in Helm? It basically looks like that. You fire up a Helm upgrade command with the wait flag and you don't really say anything un uh, until the release is done, whether it failed or succeeded. Uh, so what's missing here? Uh, first, there are no information about what we are tracking right now. Uh, what are the resources that we are trying to deploy? Uh, what are their status? No information at all. Uh, the second is deployment will not stop on errors, for example, in your pods. It will only stop when the timeout, uh, when the Helm reaches the timeout without, uh, and when some resource did not progress to the ready state, <clears throat> which will take by default five minutes, but often you will increase this timeout. It won't won't always work like that. So, <clears throat> uh, would be good if we could uh, determine that the releases failed earlier than, for example, ten minutes. <clears throat> uh, we'll stop. Then we will stop the release and we'll run probably an automatic rollback as soon as possible. Um, also, Helm does not track child resources like pods of the deployment. It doesn't not know how to find them, how to track them, how to catch errors on them. Uh, and Helm does not know anything about custom resources and does not track them uh, in any capacity. So, uh, I can say that in Nelm and Werf uh, we solved these issues, uh, sometimes completely, sometimes partially, <clears throat> but still. Uh, that's how the real-time deployment progress looks in Nelm and Werf. Uh, you run the Werf converge command, which is basically the same as, almost the same as Helm upgrade. And uh, every few seconds uh, you will see updated progress status in your terminal, uh, which has all the resources that we are currently tracking, uh, what we are waiting for, uh, be it readiness, presence of resource or absence. <clears throat> The, uh, you can see the current state of the resources and additional info, including errors that we um, that we can actively catch, uh, and also we can react to errors. So, if there are, for example, uh, by default two or more errors um, in the in the same part, like uh, the part crashed two times in a row, then we will uh, fail the deployment. Uh, the Helm release. Uh, we will fail it immediately so you can run your auto rollback as soon as possible uh, minimizing the potential downtime. Uh, also as you can see here there is a let's say Redis cluster custom resource and we will actually and we are actually trying to track it uh, how it works. Um, when Werf and Nelm ex uh, finds the resource that it does not know anything about, uh, just like all the custom resources, it will try to find in its status some fields that could be uh, indicators of its uh, readiness status. And if it finds uh, a field such as that, uh, in our case, it, it, it's uh, a field status dot face, uh, then it will try to track this resource. <clears throat> uh, other than, uh, otherwise, it will just skip it. So uh, I'd say it works pretty well, uh, very, very low rate of false positives, and uh, I, I'd, risk, I'd risk to say it will cover like about 80% of uh, all the custom resources, uh, at least uh, those custom resources that can have uh, their state tracked through their status. Uh, also, we uh, we will show you the real-time logs uh, right in the terminal from uh, all the pods that you spawn uh, using your 
controllers like deployments we can find these parts and we can grab the logs from them <clears throat> which can be useful uh, when you trying to debug uh, any issues that might arise during your helm release uh, this behavior can be tweaked and can be disabled altogether if you don't want it uh, but it is available by default uh, the same with uh, kubernetes resource events we will show the resource we can show the resource events for all the resources that you are deploying with now or birth um, although this behavior is disabled by default but can be enabled per resource with the uh, special annotation uh, so all in all we have uh, much uh, we have really heavily improved our tracking subsystem which is uh, which can track uh, many many more resources uh, than the uh, Helm 3 original uh, tracking subsystem and uh, it will uh, it, it is capable to catch errors uh, to fail Helm releases early and to run the rollbacks as soon as possible uh, what else good do we have uh, we have two new mechanisms to uh, configure the uh, specific deployment uh, the specific order of the resources during deployment uh, so let's start with when do you even need to configure uh, a specific order of the deployment during release uh, for example when you need to run a migrations job job with migrations after a database or if you need to run an application only after a database is up and ready and the migrations are executed or when you need to run a job some custom job uh, only after an application is uh, is uh, created and ready so pretty basic stuff you will very very often need this uh, there are a few ways uh, how to configure the deployment order in helm uh, the first one is using Helm hooks, um, but there are serious issues with them. Uh, the first one is that you can't run Helm hooks in the middle of a deployment, only in the beginning or in the very end. But you can't like deploy two deployments that are non-hooks and then um, deploy a hook just uh, between these two deployments. You can't do that. Uh, also, you can run hooks in parallel, even if they have the same weight, they will still be uh, executed sequentially. Uh, other than that, hooks are not uh, hooks are also not designed for persistent resources like deployments or stateful sets. You can deploy st uh, deployments or stateful sets or something like that with Helm hooks, but it is not optimal at all. Uh, there will be numerous issues with it like for example if you have a deployment that is a hook but you actually need it it's, uh, as a persistent resource it is uh, it is something Im important and not something that you deploy and like forget uh, and let's say you will rename this deployment in your helm chart and then redeploy your release uh, what will happen is that now you will have two versions of your deployment in the cluster the one with the old name and the one with the new name uh, there are also other issues so it is not very useful for things like deployments or stateful sets uh, the other mechanism that is available is uh, init containers is it's not something specific for helm it is a kubernetes mechanism uh, but what are the issues uh, the first one and uh, the probably the uh, most important one is that they are pretty difficult to write and maintain uh, every init container is uh, some custom shell script uh, which is uh, very uh, d depends a lot on what you're trying to wait for what kind of service uh, what um, are it's uh, like uh, service name ports uh, maybe credentials so it's always uh, uh, something custom and uh, considering what we are trying to achieve it's a bit too complex that should be solved with like a simple annotation or something like that uh, also we need containers they are only available for controllers and some custom resources obviously not every resource in the 
uh, Kubernetes uh, spawns pods and uh, init containers can be only used when you when you use pods when your resource <coughs> deploys them. Uh, the third way how to configure specific order of resources in Helm is to slice your single big uh, release into multiple small releases. Um, the first problem is that the more releases there are, the more difficult it is to manage them. And you will also probably need to either some like shell trickery to uh, coordinate uh, their rollouts, or you need to use some additional software <clears throat> to manage it. Uh, there, there will be no automatic rollback. Uh, at least with again some shell trickery uh, if you slice your single release into multiple <clears throat> because for example if you deployed four uh, four small releases and uh, the fifth one fails and you have the atomic flag enabled then only the last one will be rolled back but not the first four <clears throat> which is not what we need uh, and you can uh, you can use some additional software to uh, simplify the management of the multiple releases, but again, it's uh, first it's additional software, and the second point is that it still does not solve all problems. Like it will, like for example, with Helm file, it, it won't solve your problem with automatic rollbacks. You will still need to hack something. Uh, so. Uh, summarizing, there are multiple ways to configure the um, exact deployment order in Helm, but they are either non-universal or too complex or both. Uh, so we provided a new way how to, in addition to all the existing, you can uh, still use them, uh, we provided a new way which is uh, an annotation worth.io wait <clears throat> it works very similar to how the helm.shell slash hook weight works, but our weights, they also work for non-hooks, but for hooks, they, they work too. Uh, based on weight, uh, we group resources, and these groups, they are deployed sequentially from the uh, group from uh, with the uh, list, uh, from the group with the lower weight to the groups with the higher weight, higher weight, um, and at the same time, our resources of the same groups, which means with the same weight, uh, will be deployed in parallel. Unlike with hooks, they always deploy sequent uh, deployed sequentially, even with same weight. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's illustrate this with the example. Uh, Let's say you have a stateful set in your Helm release. By default, it has weight zero, so you don't really need to do anything here. But then you will uh, you want to add a job that will be deployed only after your stateful set. So you you will add the job to your Helm chart, and then will add an annotation where dot io weight uh, one. And let's say then you want to add a deployment to your Helm chart, but the deployment must be deployed only after both the job and the stateful set are deployed. And you uh, add the deployment, add annotation with weight, uh, but uh, set it to something higher than both the job and stateful set, for example, two. <clears throat> and this way, uh, on the next release, first we will deploy the stateful set, then the job, then the deployment. Uh, also, you can add, uh, for example, multiple deployments with the same weight, this way they will be deployed, deployed in parallel in, this, uh, in the same group, but only after the job and stateful set are up and ready. Uh, we, ha we also have the alternative way to uh, specify the um, order of the resources during deployment. It is uh, what we call a mechanism of direct dependencies. It's also just a simple annotation, dependency.worth.ir. Uh, with this, you can basically do the same as you do, uh, as you can achieve with uh, worth weights, but it will, uh, it can provide you a much more effective parallelizing of uh, resource deployments. Uh, let's, sh uh, 
it, it, it will probably be easier to explain by example. Um, let's say we have a Helm release. There are four resources, now two stateful sets with databases, two deployments with applications. Uh, and we have, um, for, for the first application, we need the first database to be up and ready, and for the second application, we need <coughs> uh, the second database to be ready. And let's say the first database takes one time to, uh, to be up and running, and the first application, th three, uh, three minutes to be up and running. And with the uh, second database and second application, let's say it will be vice versa. So not one and three minutes, but three and one. Uh, how can we deploy this with uh, worth weights? Uh, we will need to add a uh, weight annotation for both uh, the first database and the second database. Let's say it'll be uh, weight zero. And we should also add annotation with weight to both applications. Let's say with weight uh, one. Uh, this way we will create two groups of for our deployment. Uh, that will be deployed sequentially from the group with the lowest weight to the highest. The first group then will take three minutes to deploy, the second group uh, two, three minutes to deploy, uh, as long as the longest resource in that group. So the whole release will take six minutes. Uh, how can we do this more effective, faster, uh, with the direct dependencies? So uh, let's go back to our release. It's completely the same but we will not use the weights uh, to order the resources, but instead we will use the uh, annotation dependency.werf.io. So we will need to add this annotation to both our um, deployments with the applications. <coughs> uh, so it will express the dependency between the uh, corresponding uh, databases, uh, uh, between the applications and databases. Uh, this will in turn so, sort of, uh, it, it will sort of create two pipelines uh, during the deployment. So the first pipeline will be the first database and the first application and the second pipeline will be the <coughs> uh, second database and second application. Uh, those are like virtual pipelines, so they're not real. This, All of this will happen uh, in one Helm release and one Verve Converge command. <coughs> So uh, both of these uh, sort of pipelines will execute in parallel and each will take four minutes. So that will mean uh, that the whole release will take four minutes, which is uh, two minutes faster than, the, uh, than what we had with the worth weights. Uh, also, with the direct dependencies, you can orchestrate the deployments of uh, like any complexity, whatever the uh, web of dependencies between the resources in your Helm chart is, uh, no matter how complex it is, uh, it can be uh, described with the direct dependencies. And it will deploy it, and it will deploy it in the most effective manner. Uh, so, summarizing, uh, in addition to a few uh, techniques to uh, specify this specific order of deployment of resources uh, that are available in Helm, we are providing uh, two new ones that, unlike um, those that are present in Helm, are universal, uh, pretty simple to use, and very powerful. Now, and now uh, I would want to talk about predictability of resource updates at Helm and what's wrong with it. Uh, let's start with how resource updates uh, work in Helm. Um, Helm uses a three-way merge to update resources. Um, to simpl uh, if uh, a little bit simplified, it creates a three-way merge patch based on manifests uh, for the resource from the 
three sources. Uh, the first source is the resource in the cluster as it is right now. The uh, second source is the resource manifests from manifest from the new release that you are trying to deploy, and the third source is the manifest of the resource from the previous release. So Helm takes uh, manifest from these three. <coughs> sources, creates a three-way merge patch and sends the patch to Kubernetes. Then the Kubernetes will uh, update the resource <coughs> in question. So, uh, the problem is uh, three-way merge, uh, as uh, how it is implemented in Helm at least, has a serious fundamental problems. They are pretty difficult to describe. They are all um, depend on s specific pre-existing state uh, pre previous ham releases <clears throat> but uh, okay let's start with an example uh, let's say you have a deployment in your chart and you modify this deployment now you run Helm upgrade and let's say you also have a job hook pre-release hook uh, in your chart and it failed. Uh, what will happen with the deployment then? It will not be updated because if the pre-release hook uh, fails then the deployment uh, immediately stopped so it will not go uh, to uh, updating the deployment. Uh, then we execute Helm upgrade again and there is a potential problem uh, that might arise. Um, as as you remember, I said that the three-way merge patch that we create for the resource, um, in our case for the deployment, um, is created based on manifests from three sources. First one is the cluster, uh, the second one is a manifest from the new release, and manifest from the previous release. The problem with the previous release. Uh, although we know that the previous release failed, um, we do not know where it failed. We do not know, Helm doesn't know, uh, it has no way to know, uh, whether the deployment from the previous failed release w was deployed or not. Uh, so here we basically have one of our sources uh, is possibly, and in this particular case it is definitely, incorrect, which might provide um, which might produce uh, an incorrect three-way merge patch, <clears throat> uh, which will in turn will be sent to the Kubernetes, the resource will be updated, but it will it can look uh, not as you expect. So, <clears throat> so in the end you have uh, one deployment in your Helm chart, uh, but then you go to the cluster and you see uh, some completely different, something completely different. Uh, some fields might mi might be missing, some fields might be not updated, <clears throat> uh, some fields that must be there must be missing. <clears throat> uh, so not not very good, I'd say, very very bad because that's one thing that you expect to work like 100% of, of time. Uh, of a tool like that is to deploy what you instructed to deploy. Uh, there are a lot of issues like that with the three-way merge and the way how manages the releases, but that's just one of such problems. Uh, how to solve these problems? How to, how to ensure that the resource is updated correctly? Uh, in Helm, basically, the only way to do that is to get rid of three-way merge altogether uh, in favor of server-side apply. Uh, server-side apply is an alternative mechanism. It's uh, comparatively new. Um, it is available in Kubernetes since uh, Kubernetes 1.22. Uh, <clears throat> it is instable in 1.22. <clears throat> Uh, the main difference of server-side apply is that it is mostly server-side, so it means mostly Kubernetes-side. Most logic happens in the Kubernetes itself, uh, and the patches are actually to, uh, created by the Kubernetes itself. <clears throat> uh, and the main uh, profit for us from, it, from this it, is that we do not uh, really need uh, the previous release manifests to create our patches and that's when the issues arise 
with all this we can determine whether resource will be was deployed or not etc uh, so basically all the problems that we had with the three way merge and the way uh, the helm manages releases uh, as we can see, it was solved by implementing server-side apply instead of three-way merge in our deployment subsystem. Uh, server-side apply uh, is uh, basically an industrial, uh, industrial standard by now. Uh, it is present in Flux, in uh, Argo CD, in Cube Control Customize, and now in Werf Noun 2. Uh, but there is no server-side apply in Helm, <coughs> and uh, uh, as f uh, it looks like they're not going to implement it, at least any not anytime soon. Uh, there are no plans, no work in that direction, <coughs> and uh, yeah, it's f fair to say it's not that easy to implement, so <clears throat> um, that's understandable. Uh, so what else good do we have? Uh, we have an ability to show you what's going to change during the next Helm release. Um, Helm cannot show changes that will be made during the next deployment, at least out of the box. Uh, when it can be useful? It can be useful when you accidentally disable a chart, for example, or have s or you do some mistakes in values or mistakes in Helm templates, which is very easy to do. Uh, or maybe you had some unexpected manual changes by some sysadmin in your cluster uh, that you have uh, no clue about. <clears throat> in all of these situations, it would be beneficial to have some uh, special like CI job, maybe only for production environment, that will run before the actual upgrade, uh, release upgrade, and that will show you what will change, so you can kind of approve what's going to happen. <clears throat> um, Helm does not have anything that provides uh, function uh, functionality like that out of the box, but it has a few a few plugins. One of the plugins is a Helm diff plugin, which can show the difference between the current release and the previous release, but it has serious flaws. Uh, the first one is that resources in a cluster are not taken into account at all. So it basically, it's a bit oversimplified, but uh, it basically um, show you the diff between the Helm template uh, for the new release and Helm template for the previous release and just show its, uh, sh shows it by line by line. <clears throat> uh, but as uh, you understand, there, there is no cluster resources uh, in this scheme, so if uh, admin or DevOps changed something in the cluster, for example, or some operator made some changes to your resource, it will not be taken into account. <clears throat> uh, also, Helm Diff can't uh, accurately determine the status of a previous release. It's what we were talking about in the uh, three-way merge and server-side apply section, when you can't really be sure if the release is completely deployed or not, <clears throat> how, m how many resources of it uh, were updated and how many were not. Uh, all the same issues are here. <clears throat> and it also does not reproduce the actual deployment logic, so it can't uh, really know uh, whether the resource will be created, updated, adopted, uh, recreated, or something else. <clears throat> uh, it just shows you a line-by-line -line diffs. So, uh, summarizing, it's it will show you something probably useful in some cases, but you can't really trust it because <clears throat> the results are... Um, uh, the results very often can be very inaccurate. Uh, our solution uh, is worth plan comment. The most logic is actually implemented in Nelm, <clears throat> but uh, uh, in Werf, uh, it is exposed in as Werf plan command. Uh, unlike uh, Helm diff plugin, <clears throat> Werf plan command relies on resources in a cluster instead of saved manifests of a previous release. <clears throat> uh, 
basically how it works is it gets resources from the cluster as they are now and then it will send uh, the uh, to the kubernetes api special uh, resource update requests in <clears throat> uh, in a special dry run mode uh, in this mode, Kubernetes will not change the resource in the cluster, but it will return uh, to us how the resource would look like if it would be actually updated. So we have uh, this very, <coughs> uh, very precise um, uh, to be resource version and the current resource version and we can diff them uh, producing very accurate results very accurate diffs <clears throat> uh, also where plan command uh, reproduces the actual deployment logic so basically it does half of the uh, upgrade <clears throat> our upgrade it first builds um, a pretty thorough complete plan of what's going to happen in the cluster and then it will execute it so our verf plan command it just does half of that it builds the plan uh, and then it stops showing you the results <clears throat> and it uh, at, at this point uh, it knows uh, what resources can be created uh, will be created, which of them will be updated, etc. So that's how uh, it usually looks like when you call the verf plan command. Uh, as you see here, there is a div for the uh, deployment. Uh, the deployment will be updated, one field deleted, one, one changed. Uh, job will be recreated and config map will be deleted. So uh, now I <clears throat> I talked about probably the most interesting uh, and the most major improvements in <clears throat> in Nelm and Worf. <clears throat> but there are actually a lot of other improvements. Uh, I can't name them all, obviously, but uh, I will mention a few. The first one <clears throat> is uh, an ability to store. Uh, secrets uh, writing git in helm charts in an encrypted form uh, <clears throat> these secrets are then can be either uh, pulled into your helm templates uh, during the deployment or uh, th that can be even like a special file secret values which is uh, values but in an encrypted form uh, and these values can be used just as regular ones and will be decrypted on the next deployment. Uh, we also have an ability to wait for uh, external resources to be ready. <coughs> uh, the resources that are not even part of your release. So let's imagine that uh, you have a vault operator which dynamically creates a secret sometimes it will create the secret or maybe not maybe you create just created a namespace and it it didn't have enough time to react <clears throat> uh, so uh, with the special annotation uh, external dependency worth IR uh, you can which you can um, attach to your for example deployment uh, which will uh, which needs this particular secret to work uh, you can uh, force uh, worth to wait for this uh, for the presence of the resource mentioned uh, in our case it's secret <clears throat> uh, so worth will wait until the secret is present already and only then it will proceed to uh, the deployment whether it be update or create doesn't matter uh, also, we have uh, improved CRD support in comparison to uh, what Helm 3 offers. Um, CRDs from the CRDs directory in Helm charts, uh, when deployed with Helm, they are actually only deployed on the very, very first release, so Helm install. <clears throat> but on uh, subsequent uh, Helm upgrades, uh, this directory CRDs uh, from the chart uh, is not even read. So we fixed that and uh, this directory is read and uh, if there is something, some changes, it will they will be deployed uh, even on, uh, not only on Helm install, but also on, on release upgrades. Uh, also, uh, Helm will not update 
the CRD from the CRD directory if there is some if there is a CRD with that name already present uh, present in the cluster but we will uh, and there are numerous other features and bug fixes uh, in our subsystem <coughs> that you will not find in HAM3 uh, but uh, I won't be able to name that all and <coughs> probably that won't be very interesting. <coughs> uh, all right. At the end, I wanted to mention a few other features that we are going to implement uh, pretty soon. Uh, the first one is ability to patch charts so that you have a chart and when uh, during deploy you render it. <coughs> uh, then these patches can be applied over the result of uh, the templating. <clears throat> uh, when it can be useful, uh, it can be useful for example when you use a third-party chart uh, and let's say the chart developer did not expect you, that you need some fields in the deployment for example so he did not provide you values for that <clears throat> and uh, usually you need to fork the chart and then con continuously rebase it upon upstream uh, but with this chart patching mechanism uh, you don't need to f fork charts just to add a few fields to some resource <clears throat> uh, just uh, provide the patch and it will do it for you uh, also we want to add uh, straight to the Nelm, Werf, Car uh, an ability to pull charts directly from Git including dependent charts <clears throat> Uh, to be fair, the, there are a few plugins uh, in Helm to do that, but uh, we think that would be very useful to have out of the box because, like, really, most of the time, uh, you, or maybe even never, you don't really need the uh, Helm chart repository. No point. Uh, why don't just pull it from Git? It has the authorization and whatever. So, <clears throat> uh, also we we would like to add some alternative to Helm templates. Um, we need to still figure out uh, what should it be. It should either be some special language like Q or uh, general maybe general purpose language like uh, maybe TypeScript. <clears throat> uh, we haven't decided yet, but we, but we will surely add uh, add something. Uh, so, summarizing. Uh, we have already a lot of major features and fixes uh, already implemented in Nelm and Werf that you won't find in Helm 3. Uh, Nelm and Werf are production ready. Uh, Want to try Nelm? Just use Werf uh, uh, version 2.0. Uh, standalone command line interface for Nelm will come soon, as soon as we do it, as soon as we finish it, but it's um, uh, pretty high in our list of priorities. Uh, you can expect active development and support for both Worf and Nell. <clears throat> and Helm chart compatibility in both Nell and Worf uh, is not going anywhere. That's our strategic goal so that the vanilla Helm charts work as they uh, worked in Helm but uh, probably better. Um, and uh, at the end, we uh, really want to make out of Nelm what Helm 4 should have been. Uh, so let's hope uh, we manage that. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to try Nelm, try Werf with Nelm. Uh, go to github.com slash werf slash Nelm. There is a uh, easy quick start, especially for those who uh, use Helm right now. So uh, that's it, thank you for watching.